guys, all right. Back for the teardown part two. We have a box full of stuff. We got the alternator, intake manifold, some coolant stuff, cool packs, uh, the engine mount mount. I don't know the real name for it. Some catch can hoses. Uh, I think we're going to start off here with the high pressure fuel pump. Get that dealt with. Uh, disconnect this line. It should just be one, two, three. Wiggle this baby off. Um, then from there, we'll go over through the fuel rail and injectors. The injectors are going to be a pain in the butt. I already know. Uh, from there, we'll do the thermostat and then see how that connects to this here heat exchanger. And I think this whole assembly right here, um, it's probably going to leak a whole bunch of oil, I'm assuming. I don't know. We'll see. Well, then I'll take that off. We'll get this upper cover off, the dipstick off, um, re-attack these hoses. Doubt they're going to come off. We'll see. And, uh, yeah, with well, this stuff that goes to the, whatchamacallit there, thermostat, water pump. I believe this is a like the little pump that runs after the car is off to circulate coolant around the car. So, hopefully that's not too stuck in there. We'll see. This has like uh, little clips on it or little buttons. We'll uh, we'll attack that. So let's do it. All right, we're gonna break this hard line loose and hopefully not. There should be no. Maybe just a little residual. Don't know if I have to break this one loose, but we're gonna find out. Oh, yep, some residual. Like I said, we we'll just connect that bad boy right on back. All right, then we'll see. I tried. Try to bring up the engine book here. I have it, but uh, because I'm uploading the video right now, it's taking a little damn bandwidth, so I can't bring up the engine book. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it here and hope it's just these three to uh, take this off. Off she goes. Click. So this is what it looks like behind your high pressure fuel pump. Obviously the cam actuates the, the fuel pump. So Boop, there it is. Alright, now we're gonna start getting all this uh, coolant and thermostat water pump. Or no, I lied. Fuel stuff next. These bad boys out. There's no. Okay. I'm getting this off of here. This is gonna be a pain. So stand by and enjoy. Stop. Alright, so I just kind of just yanked on it on one side. Tore off here. Another yank. Bring this over to catch all this fuel. Oh boy. Alright, and this should have. Oh, well, yeah, because those inject those two injectors stayed in, but otherwise this whole thing would pull off. I don't know if I can get it with my hands, so we'll have to unclip these two injectors that stayed. We'll pull this away and get those injectors out. And... Boom. Boom. You are now? Okay. Um... So, there's a couple of these injectors stayed, so pulling this guy off, it just pulls right off. Um, I'm grabbing some fellas here, going around it, and just giving her a little yank. Boom, comes right off. Now you guys can see, she'll focus here. Say what? Yeah. All that carbon build up on the tip there. You can kind of like, just scratch, and you can just scratch this shit off, that's gross. I don't know if I'll be putting these injectors back in or not. I might just get new ones, depending on the price. I think Paul said they were pretty expensive, so I might just send them somewhere, get them cleaned up, flow tested or whatever. I don't know who can even flow test these because it requires so much pressure. Because these, you know, direct injectors, they literally go, they're called direct, because they go directly into the cylinder. So it requires a lot of pressure to get these to fire into a cylinder that's under a bunch of pressure. So 
you know, your high pressure fuel pump that feeds your direct injectors. There you go. All right, so we'll go here. I think they call this like an after pump. I might be making shit up. I don't know. Get these little buttons off. Should slide semi out of the way. Uh, is there another button? Oh, this works. There's there's a little guy back here. It's some it's like a M M10. Just a bracket that holds that. Boom. We will place that back. Note to self in the video, nothing actually threads in there. It's just a little dummy post. Note to self. Boom. I'm gonna switch bits again and just start yeeting some stuff off here. Probably gonna lose some coolant here. How many is there? One, two, three, we'll see. Oh, might not be able to get to this. Does this actually have to come out? No. We'll find out. right into the head there. Nice. Moving on to the water pump thermostat. Um, I don't know what this cover does. I'm going to yeet it off just to see if there's anything under here that might need to be taken off. Doesn't seem too friendly. Oh, there's like a little clip here of some sort. No, is that part of that? No. Oh no, there's another. <laughs> Imagine this is might be where the belt is. Yeah. See, look. There you go. Belt. Nice. So, we'll put these back in the cover for now. I'm just gonna slip this bad boy on off real quick. Seen this in the episode of Shop That. So shout out to Paul once again. So I watched like all the videos. Like Shop Dap has another page called Ask Ask Shop Dap Shop Dap, and it is their main YouTube page or YouTube channel. And a lot of the stuff, even though you might not think it applies to you, like you should watch them and listen and learn. And wait, if you ever go to do stuff like this, like at least you have like some type of prior knowledge. I'm glad I do. Dang it. Pause. And of course, something stuck again. Um, let me go ahead and do the bottom ones now so it doesn't just fall off. There's two down here somewhere hidden, it looks like. I can't. It's very tough. This fat little, uh, little tool doesn't like to fit in any of these spots. Oh yeah, that's right, they're locked in. See, I learned that from the video too. Those screws don't actually like, just fall out. Um, I'm actually gonna have to take this coolant hose off, I think, to reach this. Oh, no, maybe not. No, no maybe so. There we go. Okay, whole thing's kind of loose, it could just be this. Last one up top. Keep some 
pressure on it here. Okay, so all the hardware is out, but it like, uh, come up top here, get my light out. You can see where it connects right in here to this heat exchanger. So I think I'm just gonna have to pull it off towards the driver's side and probably make a mess. So pull this pan out some. See what we are missing. Oh yeah, comes right off. Like I said, keeping everything together. So look, I got this whole assembly here of well, I'll probably let the coolant out, but get a good look in there. See how that looks, looks pretty cool. It's one beefy machine, I can tell you that. Jesus, oh, now I'm leaking coolant. And right here is where I connected to the heat exchanger. So I'm gonna go set this. I'm gonna take the, that out of the box so I can just toss it in there. So to get this, get your belt off for the water pump, I believe this is the balance shaft, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And to get that, you gotta go through this little window that they made just for that and I'm not about to mess with that I don't know if you're supposed to hold the crankshaft while you mess with that or if this is just a low torque I'm gonna have to look that up like I said the internet's being dumb right now so I'll get back to you guys on that but the next assembly we're going for we're going for this whole whole thing here and I believe like this heat exchanger isn't actually attached it doesn't there's no hoses or anything else running to it so this is where oil will meet coolant and they'll transfer the heat to one another um, I don't know if that's even really necessary obviously it is I mean they made it that way so who am I to second guess them but I think just all these one two three four five and they should come off it's definitely gonna make a mess probably take this bracket off too uh, and then from there, we'll get off this this guy right here, cover, dipstick, and uh, maybe we'll flip it upside down and pull the pan or something. All right, hopefully this is correct. I believe it's going to be RTV to the block. Um, here goes nothing. Try and keep these in order. Oh, that Sure. Keep these in order as I go. And then what goes where? Oh, that's a tight boy. Sheesh. Bottom two are the same length. Felt like RTV. There's some RTV on there. Nope. This will be the middle two. Kind of loose. Middle two are the same, and it looks like this will be the last one. It shouldn't just fall off. Let's see how this whole thing feels. It just feels like that's the only one holding it on. So there's probably uh, some male ends that go into the block or something. Top one, which is the same length as the middle two. These bolts are for the AC. I gotta order that AC delete bracket still. Keep forgetting about that. All right. Um, oh boy. Oh, oh, uh, the fuck. All right, come over here. The only thing holding it on now is this bolt for the dipstick. So we'll get the dipstick off. This should just yank right out of there. And then we'll, we'll do this. I'm gonna stick a, a bolt back in so it doesn't fall. Just a little right there. We should be able to scoot this. Oh yeah, this pops out. Pop this screw back in. Which is good, because I was hoping I wouldn't have to deal with any of these sensors on the side, so. That's good. Let me see if this baby just wants to work its way on out. Right on. Got the racing line dipstick. Courtesy of the lady holding the camera. Toss that bad boy on in. We will. Oh, I want to switch bits here. 
Cool beans. Not a huge mess. A lot of this stayed together. We've got a gasket in there. So this should keep, and you can see oil down in this one. And there's coolant in the other one. So this is, yeah, the coolant and the oil will mix here. and Well, not mix, but they all go through here like kind of, I guess, like a radiator of some sort. I, I'd imagine there's separate fins and they transfer the heat back and forth. It's actually a lot lighter than what I thought it was going to be. Cool stuff. Nothing too fancy here. I believe this is just a knock sensor. It's got to be a knock sensor. Which is kind of weird because this goes all the way up, connects under the manifold, all funny. It's so interesting to say the least how things tie into one another. Alright. Go ahead and take this off. This is the PVC plate. This is the V2, I believe, of the racing line. I think they're at V4 now. They changed the position of this little barb fitting. Uh, the new one, this part of the plate. This attaches to this plate with the screws are underneath. I think a couple of people had failures when they, they didn't tighten them enough or didn't put Loctite on them or I am going to assume both. And the bolts came down and went right into the cam. So they wound up revising it and I think they revised it again after that. Um, I don't have any issues with this plate. So I don't think I'm going to replace it. I mean, I'd like to get the whole new one because this has all their old logos on it um, and this is the new one so I'd like everything to match that which matches the dipstick which matches the oil housing or the oil filter housing and all that it would be really nice to have it, it just bothers me that things don't match I'm a little upset oh and the intake doesn't match either but I think I'm going to switch up intakes I'm going to switch up uh, the elbow on the turbo probably go with the DVB DVB Two, since there seems to be the flow, highest flowing and then go with like the MST hose and then uh, probably go custom from there. I'd like to do a head, headlight cutout like she has um, for track days and then like, I got the actual like the drag strip or whatever just not even run an air filter. Um, I have like some modular setup with uh, what's it called V-bands or something. I know a couple I know a guy in Canada, actually, homie, if you're watching, I might be hitting him up for an intake with a guy. Free Smoke as well. He makes intakes. I call it like the Big Dawn or something like that. Oh, boy, this is not wanting to break loose. No. I do not want to strip this. Yeah. Pause. Ooh, well, like so. Pop right up. You see, here's all the screws I was telling you guys about. On the old version, people had some of these back out and fall literally that's your can shaft right there under it so would not be a good time i'm going to cover this up immediately all right all right we're gonna get these uh cam sensors off here they are not torqued on there much at all and they're very soft you're trying to do this uh cam cover in the car is very annoying to do especially to line up the seal down here and these this one screw, I think it's this one, is real close to the uh, AC line. So you're gonna have to like make a makeshift tool to get in there. It is just like, it is a pain in the ass. It is not fun. I've done it more than once. Zero out of 10 on the fun scale. I wonder how far we'd be behind starting today if we didn't have this tool. Probably pretty far. This thing makes. Everything's so convenient. So I marked these front, back. Probably gonna replace them. They're exact same part number. It doesn't really matter. Definitely gonna replace them. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say like what should and shouldn't be replaced. If I had the money, I would literally just say everything. Or do everything, but dang thing don't won't come out. Come on, boom. There we go. There we go. There's cam. I think this is basically just a magnet that reads the position of the cam. I don't actually know though.
Come on, baby. There you go. Same thing. Literally, same exact thing. Break a couple of these bad boys loose. Nice. So we got some chain guides here. Guide, guide, guide. Um, I forget what they call this thing, but I think that's uh, it's a, it's a thing. It does things, it holds things in places. Dang, this is kind of cool, huh? Dope. Well, guys, that's gonna be end of today's video. Next video, we'll start. We'll start off with the crank pulley. Get that lower cover off here. Flip it. Get the pan off, start on the timing chain guides and chains and the oil pump chain and basically, yeah, and then try and get these damn hoses off the back. I'm gonna spray them down with some more PB plaster. I tried to yank on them a little bit. They weren't coming. I really don't want to destroy them. I also have, I have an idea. I kind of want to, um, so right there, like after this tees off here, like cut and weld like AN, threads and then just make and do the same here boom boom that way you can just run like some nice lines instead of having like if i ever want to pull the turbo off again i'll just like zoop zoop right here on the an lines and then same for the turbo um or not the turbo but the turbo oil feed and return It'd make life a lot more simple i think i think it'd be worth the time um yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. My boy Michael showed me some really nice lines that are like mostly black, like my catch can lines, but they have like little um, threads of blue through it. Look really dope. And he has some that are purple and orange, I think. Look really good. So, hope you guys like this video. Um, like I said, I'm no freaking expert. I'm just kind of winging it, going off of what I've learned before from videos of other people and just common knowledge here. But the next, the next stuff is going to be like, I mean, after the pan and the covers and stuff, like doing the chains and disassembling stuff from there is gonna be all by the book. I'll be showing you guys um, what, what the values are and what to do and how to do it. Hopefully we don't need any stupid, crazy special tools. I'm gonna, once the internet's done, act, done acting dumb, I'm gonna look it up and make sure I don't need anything crazy. I have like some makeshift tool to hold the crank pulley still. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Hope you guys liked the video. Um, Make sure you hit that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down below. Tell your friends about the build. Hit that join button. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.